I really want to do this interview in your office because you have so much cool stuff in your office. But we're going to start out here. There's a great picture of you and your dad. Here you are yeah, right, right here. here. Yeah. I was, and there's your dad right here. Yeah, I was, that was, I was four and a half years old, five years old right there. And, and I know, I mean, you had mentioned earlier, I was a cute kid. I don't know what the hell happened as I grew up. But, <laughs> but I love, you know, as you see out my office, this is the first thing I see. And, and I love it. They have one of these out in the hallway, too, and I just, I, lo I love it. What did you like about going to the park with your dad when you were a kid? Well, what didn't I like? I mean, when I was old enough to where I could come to the ballpark with my dad, my punishment was not coming. That happened once in five years. That's how much I like coming. And he used to give me a dollar, and I had to figure out how to make that work for nine innings. And I knew every usher, I knew every ticket taker, I knew the clubby, I knew everybody in every ballpark from age seven to 11. So what was it that one time you didn't come to the park, what happened? I acted up one day and, and I know it killed my dad to not take me, but he didn't take me and it, it, I didn't act up again. It, 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 it had its effect. Now he passed away last year. What do you miss most about him? Everything. I mean, I know how lucky I was and that's not just my dad, my folks, man, my, I was lucky. They, they, they taught, I didn't even realize till I grew up and left home how lucky I was, you know, like, man, it didn't matter. You know, you, I was taught to treat people with respect and it didn't matter what color you were, or what, you know, and, and I didn't, like I said, I didn't realize that until you leave home and you're like, man, it's not like that everywhere. All right, let's check out your office. Be, be, be careful. It's, okay. We had an Easter egg hunting here earlier today, so be careful. All right. Uh, you speaking of that, what do you got here? Well, the grandkids are in town, so the Easter Bunny made a trip over to the manager's office, so they came over this morning, and we had some eggs and stuff, and we threw the ball around and stuff. And so uh, You ate more candy than the kids, I'm guessing. Actually, these Smarties were my present from, from the grandkids. <laughs> they know I love them, so, but we hid eggs around here, and they kind of had a little fun. Now I saw this yesterday, and I didn't realize till yesterday that your official number right now is number 77. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, how did that come uh, about? Well, well, yonder Alonso came, you wanted to be 17. And I, I don't wear, ever wear a top, as you know anyway, so it's no big deal. But I didn't want to change like my underwear, my shower shoes. So I went from 17 to 77, I just put the thing over and I'm good to go. <laughs> so it's easy. <laughs> That's awesome, let's head over here. All right, I'll over follow you, corner. you go okay. where you want. So. Over here, there's a lot of cool stuff. The, uh, something absolutely jumped out. You got a ball that was signed by Billy Joel. You know what? I knew you were going to ask me that. I have no idea how I got that ball. <laughs> I'm a huge <laughs> Billy Joel fan, but I have no idea where that ball came from. And I knew you were going to ask me. I, I, I haven't met him. I would love to. But somehow, I have a Billy Joel ball. I don't know where I got it. You managed Michael Jordan in the minor leagues. Famous yeah. to get anything from Michael in here? Not in here. I do have a, uh, a bronze. It's like his hand with a bronze basketball. It weighs about 150 pounds. And I have it at home. And, and I treasure it. But it's at home. And it's way too heavy to bring in just for your interview. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, the best thing you learned from Michael Jordan? You don't have enough time. I learned so much. I mean, he, I always tell people, if I learned as much from, or if he learned as much from me as I learned from him, that he was in a good spot. Because he, I mean, talk competitive, intelligent, team, he, he had it all. He, and the biggest thing was his respect for baseball. That's what hit me the most. And it, that's why it made it work so well. How much you keep in touch with him? Actually, you know, we'll text every once in a while, every so often. and. Um, if something funny happens or something good happens, he'll, he'll shoot me a text. He's pretty good about that. So you're famous for how much bubble gum you chew. And I get actually asked that question on Twitter. They ask how many pieces per game. Give us the well, estimate. You know, you know, okay, I'll tell you, I'm going to brag a little bit. You know when you've arrived, the, the bucket down in the dugout, the kids undo the gum for me because I go through <laughs> it so fast. And, and it, 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 I, get, I take a lot of ribbing for it because, you know, if I'm that lazy, I can't even undo my own gum. But, you know... I, I, I have a bad habit of chewing tobacco, and I don't want kids to ever see it. So I wrap it up in gum, and it just, it because I don't want, it's terrible. I'm trying to cut down on it. When you have ninth innings like last night, it seems to go up, but I'm trying to back off as much as I can. So how many pieces every game? No, it's really way down. 
Like, I mean, really? It, oh my goodness! Because at one point, it, didn't you ask to oh, be like eighty six oh, to one hundred? Oh, it could be, and I, well, that's not an exaggeration. Yeah. Because I chew it so hard, I start gagging, and I got to spit it out. And you know, you look up, and it's ball one, ball two, and there's something it's in my mouth again. I bet you I had three or four last night. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. You got anything in here from Dustin Pedroia or David Ortiz? You know what? Yeah, I do. I got some stuff over here. You know what? Here, here's the, the hard thing. Some of the stuff from the Red Sox that I really treasure, yeah. I have down in here, as you can. Wow. And the reason they're in there is because in 07, we beat the Indians. <laughs> I don't want to have all, I don't, you know, I don't want to, like, yeah, in your face, guys, that I work for now. So I kind of put those down there. Give me your favorite Pedroia story. I, there's so many. I think the, the way to encapsulate him, though, is if, if I had a kid in my office, like a make-a-wish kid or something, and I'd yell at him across the room, and he'd come in, you know, and he'd rip open his shirt, and he'd go, kid, this is the body of an MVP. <laughs> and he just, it's like, that's him. Like, he, he was so humble, but so fun, and he could make somebody feel so good. Same thing with Ortiz. Ortiz could come in and light up the room with that smile and put people at ease just with that smile. All right, you got a cool thing back here, a uh, picture of Hank Aaron and you. What do you remember well, about this? Okay, so my dad played with Hank in, in Atlanta, and there's a picture that I have in my house, and Hank and, is, is sitting in the dugout with my dad, and they're messing around, and he was pointing at something, but he ended up signing it, and he goes, that's where I'm going to hit it. I mean, so, I mean, yeah. So when Hank came to Cleveland a couple years ago, I got that because my, Hank Aaron walked on water when you listen to my dad talk. So for me to get a picture with Hank, actually Mr. Aaron, meant a lot to me. How cool was it? I'm guessing he probably told you some things about your dad. And he, he my dad played cards on the plane together a lot. They were, they're pretty good friends. So that meant a lot to me that he would remember um, there was a time in Atlanta when he was being honored, and he walked over and said hello, and the fact that he took the time to do that really made me feel good. Over here, Pete Rose. Yeah. Uh, What's your that's o that's that? opening day. Okay. That was one of my few smiles that year. <laughs> um, but I hit a home run on opening day, and Pete, you know, I, I, I played with Pete in Montreal, and I played for him in Cincinnati. Now, I don't know how many guys did that. It can't be too many. And I know Pete's had his, you know, whatever, how, but for me, he, he might have been the greatest teammate you could ever have. And, and I, I would have run through a wall for him. So this picture is really special to me. For you, one of the things I always thought made you good as a manager was the fact that you sort of ran the gamut as a player, right? And so you could relate to guys on the bench. Well, I, 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 yeah, I mean, shoot, I was a, a high draft pick, so I know how they feel. I got released five times, so I know how they feel. I was platooned. I never played. I went in for defense. I got defense for. I feel like I should know what guys are going through. Now, if I don't communicate that well, shame on me. But I feel like I have an advantage because I've lived through it. We're going to show the video tonight of you jumping out of the plane. And I, and I must say, you looked as scared as anybody I've ever seen. Yeah, I was. The I face. was. I was. I didn't, I didn't like the... The fact that my face, I looked like one of those dogs. There's way too much face flopping. Um, that's one of those things where it's way more fun when you hit the ground than, you know, and when the chute opens. Um, I'm glad I did it. I won't do it again. And you managed to talk some staffers to go up with you again? Why, no, why they you... wanted to. Okay. That's why I went again. Uh, they were like, man, that's the greatest thing in the world. And I'm like, you know. So there was about 12 of us that went. And I went the second time, and I actually wore a helmet. And it was way more fun just because you don't have that air just, you know, I mean, I felt like my head was going to explode. So it was way more fun the second time. But, but I'm, I'm grounded. I'm, I'll stick to the hog, you know, my scooter, and that'll be my form of transportation. Okay. So being in Cleveland, you got a lot of cool Cleveland stuff. Browns, yeah, your name they, on the back. You know what? They gave me that. I'm not a complete moron. I'm the biggest Steeler fan there ever is. I grew up in Pittsburgh. When you grew up in Pittsburgh, you're a Steeler fan. I'm not, like I said, I'm not the smartest guy, but I'm not a moron. I put my Browns thing up. <laughs> what was your interaction with LeBron when he was in town? You know what? He, he, the, I went to a game one day, I think it was like a week after I got my hip replaced. So I was sitting in the front row there, but I wasn't moving very good. Came over at halftime, gave me a hug. 
you know, you try to keep your distance and respect what other guys are doing, but I love watching the interaction and stuff. For him to take the time to walk over and do that, I thought was amazing. All right, Tito, thank you. What a great offense. Oh, Buster, I, 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 I'm glad you feel that way. This is, I mean, this is, some people say home away from home. This is my home.